Next in the den, a man who believes people need more convenient access to some of the best cooking in the world. I'm passionate about the business. No one else is doing what we're doing. The challenge of, of going into something which was forward thinking and internet based was really sort of a, a quite a fun thing to do. It's tough though, building something from scratch. Just hope they like what the uh, business has got to offer, really. Hello, <clears throat> my name is Peter Giorgio. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of Supper. Supper is a web-based, on-demand, high-end food delivery service currently working in central London. I'm asking for 100,000 for 10% to help with marketing, key hires, and further product development. We've so far partnered with 25 restaurants, two are Michelin starred, four are represented by Michelin star chefs, and the rest are award winning. We've had sales of over 165,000 pounds and pro successfully processed over 2,000 orders but we've only just scratched the surface. The aim is to curate the best restaurants in London and place them all together on the same platform for the first time, assuring customers the best choice of eateries available anywhere online. Supper is, in essence, a technology company. We've utilised cutting-edge tech to link customers to restaurants seamlessly. However, the delivery process will now, and for the foreseeable future, remain human. I'd love for you to be part of this culinary journey. I believe your delivery has arrived. Singing for his supper is London-based Peter Giorgio, whose company delivers food from high-end restaurants straight to your door. He's looking for £100,000 in exchange for 10% of his business. Have you come from London? Yes, sir. You have? All the way from London? No, no. Nah. <laughs> Multi-millionaire Tuka Suleiman has entertained at some of the top tables in the capital. Is this an investment he could dine out on? Peter, um, I like the name, I like the branding, it's good. Um, I live in central London, so I know every restaurant that you need to know. Have you got exclusivity with these restaurants or can they use any delivery service. Yeah, we have 80% of the restaurants you see on there have exclusivity, but a lot of the restaurants on there, before we came along, they wouldn't even consider delivery. Peter, uh, I'm quite surprised that a Michelin star restaurant would allow their food to go out of a restaurant being placed in your hands and delivered 40 minutes later somewhere else. Well, we don't work in those kind of time frames. What sort of time frame is it? About 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yeah, we can get, the bike can get across London in three and a half, four miles in 15 minutes. On an average week, how many orders would you take? A hundred or so at the moment, but the average order is in excess of uh, 68 to 70 yeah. pound. Okay, so 70 pounds is the order. We take commission from the restaurant, we have a delivery charge and a service charge. Okay, so, we make so from a 70 on 70 pounds? Yeah, we, on a 70 pound order we make nine pounds. You'll make nine pounds. So how much money have you put into it, or how much money is invested? What is your, your structure of the business at the moment? I've put over £300,000 in so far. Of your own personal money? Yep. Wow. A huge personal stake from a self-starter willing to put his money where his mouth is. Now Peter Jones wants to work out whether the cash has been well spent. You've had the system developed, which is a website, yeah? So far, it's a website. The amount of money that you've ploughed into developing that site is 300,000 or less? No. Obviously, that's the whole business. That's buying, buying all the bikes. So what have you spent the money on? Uh, a lot of the money has gone on technology, probably around 190,000 or so. 
Right. And where did you get your money from to put the money in in the first place? Uh, my background is trading. I was, a, I was a city trader for 13 years. Who for? I traded for myself. With whose money? My own money. And how much did you make? I obviously did OK because I've had enough money to put into this business. So, yeah, I, I've, I've had a quite a good run. So you made 300,000 or more or? Yeah. More than a million? Yeah, I've probably taken much more than a million out of the market. I didn't start the business to become, you know, a billionaire or anything like that. I started the business because I thought there was, a, there was a gap in this particular market. We're here and we're proving that this works. Peter Jones identifies deep pockets supporting a personal passion. But Sarah Willingham, the dragon that made her millions in restaurant rollouts, has been here before. Peter, I'm going to be a bit controversial. I'm going to completely disagree, actually. I don't think you have got something. I had the largest chain of Indian delivery restaurants in the UK. I know how hard this is. The problem is, if this works, it will fail. So there is a reason why top-end restaurants cap their seats, and that is because they can control what is going through that kitchen. It is fine-tuned, and actually, they operate to their capacity. I've tried it in the lower end of the market with Gourmet Burger, with Pizza Express, delivery. It didn't work for this very reason, and it's because the kitchens cannot cope with that extra level of turnover. So if it's a success, it automatically fails because they can't do it. It is a difficult thing, and I think one thing we haven't looked at the corporate market and how when corporates order, they will order three, four, five hundred pound at a time. Yeah. And some of them want to sit in their own offices and have private meetings. They don't want to go to these particular restaurants because sensitive information. So if we can tap into that market, there's not many restaurants that don't want more business during the day. And then the Except for the high-end Michelin starred ones that actually are so fine-tuned that every hour is all about prep. They cannot be making things randomly out of the hours. I think it is a big mistake. And for that reason, I'm not going to invest, so I'm out. Serial restaurateur Sarah Willingham predicts hell in the kitchen and bows out. But Peter Jones is having concerns of a very different kind. Peter, you mentioned about having somebody order at a dinner table or lunch table in their office, a Michelin star meal. I can tell you, I've been in business for 30 years. I own 28 different companies. If any one of my MDs was ordering a Michelin star meal, I'd throw him out the nearest window. That's such a decadent lifestyle. So your business is not only niche, I think your model is really in question, your valuation is ridiculous. So I can't invest in something like that. So sadly, I'm out. Two dragons have declined the deal on the table. Is Tuka Suleiman tempted to invest in Michelin star Meals on Wheels? If you had come here today and said, I have got a contract with every restaurant you can't get into, you know, where you've got to wait three months to get a booking or they're always fully booked unless they know you, and you had your USP, something very unique and say, People want to get into these restaurants, they can't, but I can deliver it. I agree with you, but we've spoken to all those restaurant groups and they're on the wait and see. So obviously, it's a sort of chicken and egg. We need to deliver and show that the, the business is taking off and actually this is working and high-end restaurants can actually use our service and be confident that when they've given us the food, the customer will receive it the other end. With all due respect, um, that's a very small proportion of the population in, in Kensington, Chelsea, in that area, that are going to want Michelin food delivered. No, but they want the experience. So I, my, my, my thing is that they want the experience of going there and having that Michelin star experience. They don't want to take away and pay Michelin star prices. So for that reason, I'm out. A flawed food concept for Tuka Suleiman, who becomes the third dragon to decline the deal. 
Now Deborah Meaden is pondering whether a £100,000 investment will even touch the sides. How much have you allowed in your future projections for further investment? OK, well, I mean, the thing is, I know that the business, like, obviously we have however many customers, 12, 1,500 customers, and if we get to, say, 6,000 in the next, you know, three weeks, four weeks, whatever, with a big marketing campaign, um, then hopefully we'll, we'll uh, achieve those. And I understand they're not super sexy for an investor, but they are quite conservative. Peter, I'm letting you run with this, but it in no way answers my question. OK, probably in order to achieve a growth of, say, 6 7% on 30%, on 40% nope. plus. Nope, probably Good around try, 300. That doesn't, that doesn't answer my question either. Around 300, 350,000, probably. Of what? Cash to keep, to keep the business going. So you're going to need an additional 300, 350,000? Yeah. First of all, I'm glad you're aware of that, because uh, yeah. I absolutely promise you, you're going to need more money. And I can tell you now, knowing you're going to need more money, which means that I'm going to get more diluted, and I promise you it'll be a lot more than 350,000, you're going to dilute me to the point at which I'm, I'm just not going to be interested. I'm sorry, Peter. You've structured it wrong, which is a shame. So I'm out. The final bill is too much for Deborah Meaden, which leaves just one dragon. Does e-commerce expert Nick Jenkins also take the view that Peter's food delivery concept is overcooked? Now, if you had come to me with someone who really understood the restaurant business, for years and years of experience of understanding how kitchens worked, that would be helpful. If you had come to me with a really good understanding of how the logistics side of this worked, then that would have been really helpful. But unfortunately, you've got lots of passion, lots of enthusiasm, and you have thrown a lot of money into this and, and thrown your life into it, but that's not enough to convince me that you can make this work. So I'm afraid I can't invest, and I'm out. Thank you very much. So the final verdict is delivered, and Peter Giorgio heads back to London without a dragon investor to join him for the ride. I think they sort of underestimate the, the sort of uh, appetite for this kind of delivery service. I suppose it is niche right now, but it may not be niche in a year or two's time. Made me hungry. Yeah. Is this beef to tar? Yeah. Beef for tuna. I don't Nick, know. Nick, Nick will eat it. Just don't eat the plastic, Nick. <laughs>